What's going on guys? Welcome to We Got A Problem. Now I know I made a video about this already, but after uploading I came across the same thing being discussed on the Politics Live Show, which consisted of a completely biased panel against the Tory MP Mark Field. So I had to go over this smear attempt by the BBC. Now, after that show was aired, new information has come to light about how these activists got in the building. It seems they have been let in through a fire door or broke in. Either one of them is interesting, so I'll keep my eye out and do another video if any new information comes out about their entry into the building. For now, let's check out the Bias Politics live show, which as you will see on the screen, the header even claims assault in it, which is nonsense. Let's return to that story at Mansion House last night. Um, just to explain, this is the annual speech given by the Chancellor, Philip Hammond. Uh, protesters stormed the building and the event where people were gathered to have dinner. Um, let's just show you once again and in full what happened involving the now former uh, Foreign Office Minister for the moment. He's been suspended, Mark Field. Let me get this person out. It's a peaceful protest. Oh, yeah. The woman being removed there is a Greenpeace protester. You could hear her saying it was a peaceful protest. Mark Field has said he didn't know they were climate change protesters at the time. Um, but just from all of you, uh, did he overreact? My instinct is yes, he did overreact in the sense that looking at that footage it seems to be a disproportionate use of violence. But I'm also very wary of jumping to conclusions and attempting to kind of, you know, seek windows into a man's soul, as it were, when we have no idea how any of us would react in that situation. And we shouldn't forget that, you know, MPs have been killed. Um, and when faced with, you know, what is an obvious security breach, I just don't want to jump conclusions about how the rest of us would act in that situation. I mean, I think it's more than an overreaction, it was assault. And I think if you look at the, the whole video, this claim that he was actually under the impression that some MPs or even the Chancellor might have been under threat, I just don't think it's credible. You can see that the Chancellor's on stage, he's giving a speech, and these are clearly peaceful protesters who are making noise. You know, they're not dressed up ready to attack someone. They're clearly there as peaceful protesters. And it was assault, and I, I imagine the police will be opening an investigation. But if you're looking to attack someone, I mean, you're not going to go in wearing like a, you know, the equivalent of a, you know, a striped shirt and a swag bag. You know, you have no idea what kind of threat you're facing here. And I think there is also a slight, an assumption that because it was a female protester, that therefore it couldn't, couldn't have, a, have assaulted an MP. But let's not forget that, you know, there have been a few years ago when the MP Stephen Timms was attacked in his constituency, it was by a female assailant. Um, do you think it would have been different if it had been a man then um, being in I, this way sort of pushed out or forced out of the room? I think so, yes. Um, I, I, I think if it had been a man it would have been different, but I also think that it might well have been different had it been, you know, let's say a left-wing MP attacking a female Brexiteer protester. It's one of those issues where it almost speaks to the, the divisions in our society, the kind of growing culture war. People look at that footage and they seem to see something differently depending on what their politics are. So we first hear from the Telegraph's Madeleine Grant, who thinks he overreacted to the situation and calls what he did violence, to which I respond, are you demented? That's not even close to violence. Have you ever actually seen real violence, love? Now, to her credit, she does defend him to some degree because MPs have lost their lives in the past, so his actions could be made through fear. We then hear from the snivelling shitweasel Michael Walker from Navara Media, the self-described radical left-wing media organisation. So, in short, a bunch of radical socialist fuckpigs. Now, our new soy boy friend here thinks Mark Field assaulted the woman. I'm not sure he even watched the same clip as I did. How you could ever call that assault is beyond me. Calling them peaceful protesters after they storm a building 40 strong is also a bit of a stretch. If you enter a building, then force your way into a conference room, you are not being peaceful protesters. He also goes on to state how your dress does not dictate your behaviour. Is this guy actually for real? He finishes saying the police will investigate, which, even if they did investigate, they will find he did nothing wrong. And the woman involved has also said she's not pressing charges, likely because she knows he didn't do anything wrong. So, good luck with that one, soy boy. Now, Joe Corbyn then asks, would it be the same if it was a man being ejected? Now, if a 40 male soy boy activist got in there, the outcome would be pretty much the same, to be honest with you. Soy boys have around a similar level of strength as a woman, so there would have been a lot less outrage in this day and age if it was a man, though, as they don't have a vagina, and if you have a vagina now, then you're oppressed by the patriarchy. So the outrage mob will come to your defence. Now, the woman from The Telegraph hits the nail on the head, though. If it was a Labour MP and a Brexiteer, 
the outrage would be non-existent. Now let's hear from the chair of the communist Labour students, Rania Ramil. I probably butchered her name there. What did you think, Rania? I think just as a young woman in politics, someone who's had to face a lot of misogyny that we see in politics, I found it quite shocking. Um, I also found quite shocking the fact that there were people in, those, in that room who didn't do anything, who sat back and let it happen. And I think that tells us a lot about our society and the, the approach we have towards women and violence against women. Um, I think he needs to have the whip removed. I don't think the suspension from the um, Foreign Office was enough. Um, so I, I, I just think it's an awful assault. And like Michael said, the police do need to get involved and not to investigate. As I understand it, a complaint hasn't been made yet to the police. That may happen. Uh, we don't know. Laura? It's deeply uncomfortable viewing. Um, I mean, the other point about this is that there were people there whose job it is to look after and protect the Chancellor. So the Chancellor is a protected office. He will have security people there surrounding him. Um, they will assess and take action against any threats. So it is extremely, I think, unusual behaviour to jump up in this way and, and, it, and it feels horrible to watch as well. well so within seconds this spunk trumpet goes on to the because I'm young woman and the misogyny in politics bollocks. It's so fucking misogynistic that you were the chair of the Labour students. Seems very misogynistic to me that you have the highest job in that given field, Labour students whatever the fuck you do. Let me guess though you was an equality hire. It must be tough to get something because you were born with a vagina. Oh, sorry, did I assume your gender? Guess what, Snowflake? I couldn't care less. She continues complaining about people sitting back and doing nothing about the violence against women by Mark. Now, Mark did nothing wrong, nothing he did was violent, and it's got nothing to do with her being a woman. This idiot is delusional. She then goes on to say being suspended is not enough, in true socialist fashion. One punishment's not enough, they have to carry on until they destroy your life. Dirty fuck pigs like her are a complete disgrace. I'm embarrassed to be a human listening to this commie tart. We then get to Laura Trollope. Sorry, I mean Laura Trott. Former advisor to the snivelling shit weasel David Cameron. Now you would think, as a former Tory advisor, she would be on here to defend the Tory MP. But you got no chance of that on a BBC panel, of course. Let's um, read out some of the statement, in fact, all of the statement um, from Mark Field, um, who said a major security breach occurred at the dinner I attended last night when a large number of protesters suddenly and noisily stormed into Mansion House. In the confusion, many guests understandably felt threatened, and when one protester rushed past me towards the top table, I instinctively reacted. There was no security present, and I was, for a split second, genuinely worried she might have been armed. In the, as a result, I uh, grasped the intruder firmly in order to remove her from the room as swiftly as possible. I deeply regret this episode and unreservedly apologise to the lady concerned for grabbing her, but in the current climate I felt the need to act decisively to close down the threat to the safety of those present. In view of the publicity around this incident, I am referring myself, I'd already done that, to the Cabinet Office to examine whether there has been a breach of ministerial code and will, of course, cooperate fully with their investigation. Well, of course, just to confirm, as we now know, he's been suspended from his ministerial role in the Foreign Office, but not been suspended from the party. Does that change anybody's mind, having heard that statement? Well, I just want to push back against this idea that because they'd breached security, it was unclear whether they were going to hurt someone. There's a long history of peaceful protest in this country, and it follows often a similar repertoire, which is that you, you enter a building you're not supposed to be in and you make a lot of noise. And I think most people involved in politics and most of the public will recognise what's going on there. It's people who think they've got a point which needs to be heard and they're willing to break a couple of rules to do it. And those situations, I mean, I can't think of any examples of those situations ending in protesters attacking uh, anyone else. So the idea that he was acting in any way in self-defence, I think, is, know, is nonsensical. How would you be able to necessarily tell from being in that situation? And none of us were there. How would any of us be qualified to know what seemed like a legitimate threat at the time or not? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying one way or the other. I, having seen the footage, I don't think it's not clear enough for me to be able to determine uh, Mark Field his, his moral legitimacy as a human being. I feel I don't have sufficient information to do that. But there's definitely a heightened sense of nervousness yes. amongst MPs. Mm. I mean, that is, that is definitely true. And it is horrible because it means that there are overreactions in many cases. The, the thing about this is the fact he carried on. Mm. You know, this is, this is a protester who's behind him, and, and you're right, he may have just, you know, jumped, turned around. Mm. The fact he then frog-marched her out of the building when she's clearly not armed or you know any willing to try and attack that the necessarily chancellor from, from where he was sitting also, you know, no but but he carried on that was the thing he carried on because you're right like you can tell you that the kind of jump around but like, oh my god who is this person 
but then to kind of push her and by the throat out, it yeah. just feels very uncomfortable. Yeah, I know. I, it felt very uncomfortable to watch, and I agree. I'm just a bit. I just want to be careful before we leap to the conclusion that here's a you know a devious misogynist who. And some of the stuff I've seen on Twitter, people basically saying that here's a man who probably has done worse to women in private. It's an awful leap to go from yes. this particular situation, which none of us were actually privy to properly. Mm. All right. Now we hear Joe Corbyn read out a statement from Mark Field there, where he apologises for it. So I'm not even going to entertain that, as I don't think he has anything to apologise for. Of course, the soy boy attempts to refute the claim that the MPs knew that they was not intending to hurt them and that the protests don't hurt people is bollocks. How could he know that? I mean, of course he couldn't know that. That's just him guessing. And I'm sure Joe Cox didn't think the person who killed her was a threat, but he turned out to be and she paid with her life. It's ignorant and dangerous to be so blasé about it, especially in the current political climate. The one sensible panellist makes an attempt to get the panel to see that since there was not in the situation, they cannot pass judgement on his actions. She was moving towards the VIP table with no security in sight. He did his duty to stop her. How she got that far is the question I would like answered. Laura Trollope continues to attack Mark Field because he got the woman out of there when no security was coming to do it for him. He did what he had to do in the, at the end of the day. She should not have even been there. I don't understand why no one's pointing this out to be honest. So that's going to be the end of it. It was a completely biased panel, in my opinion. Four women, including the host, and one man. The funny thing is, though, it was one of the women who was actually defending this guy's actions. The irony, hey? Now let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Like and share as it helps the channel a lot. And I will see you all in the next video.